Hi, budding structural engineers. Welcome to the structural engineering lectures on advanced tree designs. In the previous class, we have seen the designs of a plated rectangular steel water tanks or gravity water tanks confirming to Indian standard IS805. In today's class, we shall see the designs of a pressed steel water tank confirming to IS804. Now, let us see the uh, pressed steel water tank. This is how the design what we are going to do, deal. Here the plates are of standard size 1.25 by 1.25 meter as we have discussed in the previous lecture. Right? Um, this is how a three tire, one, two, three, three tire pressed steel water tank of height 3 multiplied 1.7 uh, 1.25, 3.75, and here we do have in length direction six plates as well as in the width direction six more plates. Right, therefore, six multiplied 1.25. It is now um, uh, 7.5 by 7.5 meter. 7.5 by 7.5 meter uh, pressed steel water tank. Pressed steel water tank. Now we can see that. Uh, these six plates are supported on seven longitudinal girders, right? Like this, seven longitudinal girders, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Which in turn are supported on two cross girders, two cross girders, and these two cross girders are supported on the four number of columns, four number of, right? Two plus two, two pairs, right? which in turn are connected by means of uh, the bracings, horizontal bracing as well as diagonal bracing, right? This top part is what called the tank part, tank part and this part is what called the staging, staging part, right? Uh, including the footings, uh, anchor bolts, footing, etc., right? Now, uh, let us see another uh, photograph right here. The number of columns are two, right? Even we don't have any uh, checking platform, right? Now let us examine another photograph wherein I do have this, wherein the number of plates in width direction are three and in length direction are four. It means its size is equal to 3.75 by 5 meter and its height is equal to 2.5 meter and in turn it is also supported on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 number of longit uh, longitudinal girders which in turn are supported on 2 number of cross girders or main girders and those 2 main girders are supported on 4 number of columns on a staging consisting of 2 panels, 2 panels right along with the horizontal bracing as well as diagonal bracing. Now this is for a just medium medium uh, storage capacity student. Right? Now let us examine another um, photograph wherein wherein we do have a, a storage capacity of large size, large size like this, right? Where almost we can see that, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, twelve multiplied by um, uh, 1.25, 1.25. It's the size is a 15 meter by 15 meter, a large, large size. Even it's a high height. It's a one, two, three, four tires, four tires, right? And therefore, its height is all uh, uh, is also five meter, right? Five meter. Therefore, its a size is 15 meter by 15 meter by five meter, a large tank, right? Uh, which in turn is supported on. You can see that uh, there are uh, longitudinal girders. Supporting this, the longitudinal girders, right, like this, one, two, three, dash, dash, right, which in, in turn are supported on the main girders, right, one, two, three, four, and in turn supported on a staging consisting of one, two, three, four number of columns in four rows, four multiple four. There are 16 number of columns, right. That is how the staging is now consisting of 16 number of columns, right. And we can even see that is of the inlet for the water tank, and even there is an outlet provided at the other end. Right? Here, the outlet is also provided, right? And 
we can examine that there is a, a platform along the periphery of this water tank for maintenance purpose for maintenance purpose right and uh, now if i cut uh, now let us see another photograph wherein there is a, a tank of say one two three four one two three four right by one two three four right one four by uh, five by four we will have one two three four five five plates in length direction in width direction i do have one two three four four plates right and even we can see these are supported on longitudinal girders in turn are supported on the main cross girders and these cross girders are supported on three plus three number of columns consisting of one two three four panel four panels right this column these columns are uh, divided into four number of columns four number of columns right and even there is a um, uh, platform along the periphery of this water tank for cleaning or maintenance purpose now if we examine this let us examine if i cut the uh, uh, view inside the water tank this is for 1 2 3 4 4 in the width direction as well as say 1 2 3 4 5 6 in the length direction length direction so many number of plates are there uh, then these these are what uh, this is a typical precious steel uh, rectangular tank with external flanges students right the flanges are external right uh, the externally provided right um, the flanges are facing ex on outside external right and this is how the stairs will be provided for the first tire this is what called the first tire this is what called second tire right therefore once water is filled these these tanks are subjected to the bursting outside the bursting outside therefore in order to keep these plates in vertical position vertical position then we will be providing the stays like this right? stays for the first tire the second tire right and the third tire like this right so that these stays will bring back the deformed shape into the water tank into the water tank so that the um, uh, plates will be there in the same vertical position as these stays are subjected to the tension the tension force the tension force right? that is a, uh, these are what called the bottom stays right uh, which are starting from 1.25 meter height to at a in the length direction they are ending at uh, 1.25 meter always these are inclined at 45 degree even now you can see that this is the top top stay which is starting at 2.5 meter height and also ending at 2.5 meter starting from the right end right inclined at 45 degree right and sometimes uh, even we can provide in plan this type of uh, stays at the corner so that the corners will not be uh, subjected to the failure because of the bursting process right bursting process right then once we examine this let us move to or alternatively what we can do is if um, heavy um, bursting force is there then alternatively this first tire stays may also be provided for d beams right you can please see that in addition to this um, bottom stay which is starting at 1.25 and ending at 1.25 meter students right even that another uh, stay may also provided starting from 1.25 meter to ending at 2.5 meter in plan in plan right this is for the deep deep tanks right all these designs we will see um, in uh, a numeric problem a numeric problem right now let us uh, move to a numeric problem students right wherein um, uh, the uh, problem data is like this design an elevated rectangular pressure steel tank having a capacity of 120000 liters right 120000 liters then the tank is open on the top and the height of the staging is 12 meter up to the top of the columns right 
assume the din, uh, design wind pressure as 1.5 kN per meter square and also take seismic horizontal acceleration as 6% as 6% right in the previous class we have designed the staging for wind even in today's class now we will design the staging for wind as well as that of the seismic forces also for both we will now demonstrate the calculations right now let us first, uh, first fix uh, the geometry the geometry of this uh, uh, um, uh, tank student right confirming to is 804 now let us uh, i'll show this is how i'm going to fix the geometry right now i'll show the elevation view of that so that you'll understand what we are trying to do i have already shown in the first photograph how the geometry is or now the geometry is like this right i am going to fix the geometry like this right for the tank right assuming two tire assuming two tire means 2.5 meter height now i'll fix how many number of plates are required and that of the staging also like this staging staging right now let us uh, fix the geometry first then we'll calculate the loads followed by the designs analysis followed by the designs now uh, there is of the first abiding the uh, geometry or size of the tank. However, the capacity of the tank is given as uh, one lakh twenty thousand liter students. Therefore, it is equal to one twenty meter uh, one twenty meter cube one twenty meter cube of the capacity. Then, uh, this is my assumption that uh, assuming the overall height of the tank with two plates, right? Two multiplied one point two five two point five meter height, and assuming a free board of point 15 meter 0.15 meter now i do have the effective water height is 2.35 meter hence the base area of this water tank required is 120 divided by 2.35 say around 51.06 meter square now this is my assumption i want to provide a square tank a square tank therefore the side of this uh, square tank is square root of 51.06 which is around 7.14 meter. But however, we do have the uh, pressed steel plates, pressed steel plates in size of 1.25 meter by 1.25 meter standard size, standard size only like this, right? Therefore, now I'll uh, I'll divide this uh, 7.14 with 1.25, 1.25. Therefore, now I'll get. Uh, the number of plates required 5.7 but 5.7 cannot be provided therefore r say six number of plates six number of plates therefore if i provide six number of plates six multiplied 1.25 i am fixing the the side the side of this square pressed steel water tank as 7.5 meter by 7.5 meter right that is all so the side 7.5 meter and this side 7.5 meter and its height is equal to 2.5 meter 2.5 meter that is how i'm just fixing the size um, now the net effective capacity of this uh, tank is 7.5 by 7.5 multiplied by 2.35 excluding that uh, free board of 0.15 meter now i do have 132.2 um, meter cube which is greater than 120 meter cube or alternatively what you can do is you can re refer to the is is 804 is 804 there that uh, for uh, tanks of 2.5 meter deep with plates 5 mm and 6 mm thick what are the typical sizes and approximate weights and nominal capacities of, of the tank with external flanges is given right now I am choosing this 7.5 meter by 7.5 meter, 7.5 meter by 7.5 meter. Therefore, I require 84 number of plates, and the nominal capacity of this water tank is 140.4 meter cube, or 1,40,400 liters, and the approximate total empty weight of this tank is 8.85 tons, or 8850 kg. Are 88.5 kilonewtons, and 
the approximate uh, outer dimensions outer dimensions are 7.65 by 7.65 by 2.58 including that of the flanges including that of the flanges therefore this is how this table can be used from IS 804 1967 now coming to the top uh, the discussion student now just now fixed the uh, size of the tank as uh, 7.5 meter by 7.5 meter by 2.5 meter. Now, what I'm assuming is that uh, uh, because I do have six number of six number of uh, uh, plates, therefore under each plate I must have one support, one support. Therefore, six plus one longitudinal longitudinal girders must be there, right? Therefore, that is how, what I am assuming the very uh, just I am fixing the other geometry, right? I am assuming or I am fixing seven longitudinal girders or bearers or beams or girders which in turn are supported on two cross girders, two cross girders or main girders which in turn are supported on four number of columns, four number of columns, two plus two. 2, 2 plus 2 as shown in the figure, right? This is how my uh, assumption student, right? Therefore, 1, right? This is how 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Therefore, uh, at uh, the bottom of this you know, first tire, I do have the first longitudinal girder, second, third, fourth, five, six, seventh, seventh longitudinal girder running in the longitudinal direction. They are named as L1, L1 these longitudinal girders and these longitudinal girders are named as L2, L2, dash, dash, up to L3, L3, L4, L4, L5, L5, L6, L6, last one is L7, L7. Because of the mirror image, because it is a square tank, student L1, L1 is the mirror image of L7, L7. Likewise, inside, right, L2, L2 itself is mirror image of L6, L6. And similarly, L3, L3 itself is mirror image of L4, 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 right? Which all these seven longitudinal girders are in turn supported on the, the two cross girders, right? Like this, right? C1, C1 and C2, C2 because of the mirror image. These are uh, the analysis of both of these main girders or cross girders is same, is same, right? And so this is how you can see that 6, 1.25, 7.5 meter is the, the dimension of this tank and also in the uh, width direction also the same, 6, 1.25, right, is 7.5 meter and its height is equal to 2, 1.25, 2.5 meter, 2.5 meter, right. Now, let us uh, see uh, the, uh, once so I, I Fix it. The geometry, geometry like this, even now I need to fix it. The thickness, then only the geometry is uh, concluded, right? Then I will go to the um, IS804, IS804, where now the code says that uh, what should be the thickness of these? What should be the thickness of uh, these, right? And uh, this is how uh, you can see that the students, the minimum thickness of nominal uh, thickness of these plates, right? For the bottom and side plates with a depth of 1.25 but how do I have a depth of 2.5 meter therefore for bottom and first tire plates I must use um, the thickness of the plates as 6 mm and for the top tire of the uh, side plates side plates I, I shall use 5 mm thick therefore this is all from IS 804 table 5 table 5 of page number 11 I am uh, choosing these dimensions these dimensions right uh, once uh, I fix those uh, uh, dimensions, then my entire geometry is fixed, right? The size is fixed, right? That is how my geometry is fixed, right? This is of 6 mm thick plates and these are of 5 mm thick plates and the bottom, these bottom plates are of also 6 mm thick, thick, as shown in the figure. Then. Uh, once I conclude the geometry, now I'll move to the design of stays. Next subheading, design of stays. Right? Now, just now we have discussed in the previous uh, photograph of this view that uh, we need to we need to uh, 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 provide the 
stays like this, right? The bottom stays as well as the top stays. Therefore, now let us um, fix it. However, the bottom stays will be provided regularly uh, for each and every end of this plate. Then the top stays will be provided for alternative number of plates, right? For every two two number of plates will be providing, right? As shown in the figure, right? That is of the three uh, D three D sectional uh, um, view student. The same is now shown in sectional view like this, right? I am just providing uh, the bottom stays, the bottom stays like this, right? For uh, here. It is shown with the dotted line at every uh, 1.25, 1 1.25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? However, at the end, we'll provide uh, like this the cross, cross stay, cross stay, in plan, cross stay, cross stay, as I have shown in the uh, previous uh, schematic, right? There is a 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, right? In turn, in total, there are 20 number of bottom stays, bottom stays, and now let us see how many number of uh, the top stays are there, right? This is our one, right? Or this, this, this top stay, if I see in plan, in plan, this is our, right? This is what the top stay one, and even the second one, right? Therefore, two multiplied by four, I am just providing in total eight number of top stays, top stays, right? As shown in the figure, there is a the top stay and this is a, the bottom stay. Remaining is just a mirror image, mirror image. And these stays are inclined at 45 degree. Even the bottom bottom stay as well as the top stay, both are inclined at 45 degree. Now, now uh, I notate that the top stay as the first stay and the bottom stay as the second stay. Therefore, the forces in the top stay as the F1 tension forces in the bottom stay that tension is F2 or T2 as appropriate. Then I need to analyze these forces, analyze for these forces so that I can go for the design. I can go for the design. Right? Then uh, once the water is filled into into this tank, into this tank, obviously the tank is subjected to bursting. Therefore, in order to keep that vertical plate, vertical plates, which are generally connected by means of only the bolting, along with the water tightness, for water tightness, we will be doing the caulking, right? Caulking. That we have discussed in the previous video. Please uh, refer back to the student, right? Therefore, there, uh, now uh, we are providing the stays, the stays, right? Then, once uh, I um, fill the water, the fill the water in the tank, then it is subjected to hydrostatic pressures, hydrostatic pressures, right? Then the sides will be bulging outside, uh, outside like this, right? Therefore, in order to avoid that failure due to bursting, we will provide the stays. Now, let us see what is that uh, bursting forces or the hydrostatic forces acting on the side plates, right, side plates, right, this is how the uh, hydrostatic forces acting on these side plates, on these side plates, right, is shown here, right, therefore, the hydrostatic pressure at a depth of 1.25 meter from top is 9.81, 1.25, which is 12.2628 kiloton per uh, meter square and that at a depth of 2.5 meter it is now 9.81 multiplied by 2.5 meter which is around 24.525 kiloton per meter square meter square then once I get this hydrostatic pressures then I am just drawing that free body diagram of this right uh, I am assuming I am assuming that this is my uh, first joint at the top, right? This is my first joint, and this is my second joint, and this is what the third joint. With this notation, here the the reactions reactions due to the hydrostatic forces which are leading to the bursting forces or hoop forces, hoop bursting forces uh, in the top plates as P1 and in the bottom plates are the first tier as P2. For which the reactions are given by at the top joint 
one joint R1 uh, and at the joint 2 in the top tire plates R2 prime. Similarly, the reactions in the bottom plates in the bottom plates at the joint 2 R2 double prime at the bottom at the at the bottom this is R3 R3 right this is how R1 right R2 double prime R2 prime R2 double prime and at the bottom R3 prime R3 oh, sorry R3 now I need to calculate these forces these forces right and so, let us first calculate what is this uh, hydrostatic uh, force right what is the thrust what is the thrust right therefore uh, we can see that uh, the uh, stays are provided at every 1.25 meter student therefore the panel width the panel width for the design of the stays is here 1.25 meter by 2 1.25 meter by 2 therefore it is 1.25 meter is the panel width panel width is 1.25 meter and uh, the height of each of these plates is 1.25 meter 1.25 meter each therefore the thrust due to water pressure on the top plates this P1 this capital P1 is a triangular distribution half base multiplied by height half base base is 12.2625 12 multiplied by height height is uh, 1.25 that is how the area of this triangular um, uh, uh, hydrostatic pressure distribution diagram that multiplied by panel width of 1.25 1.25 then I'll get 9.58 kilo Newton is the force P1 acting at a height of 1.25 by 3 above the joint 2 above the joint 2 right then similarly the thrust due to water force or hydrostatic force above above that joint 3 above the joint 3 is calculated like this uh, p2 p2 is equal to this is a trapezoidal distribution of the force student uh, uh, stress distribution right then i'll take average 12.2625 plus 24.525 average of this multiplied by multiplied by the uh, height of this height of this is 1.25 meter and the panel width is 1.25 now i'll get uh, say 28.74 is p2 acting at a height of y bar y bar from the trapezium cg formula i would have 2a a is equal to uh, uh, 2a plus b divided by a plus b multiplied by h by 3 a is 12.2625 plus b 24.525 divided by a plus b 12.2625 uh, plus 24.525 multiplied by h height is 1.25 divided by 3 it, it now works out around 0.556 meters above the joint above this joint 3 above this joint 3 now once i get this uh, now I'll take the free body diagram as just now explained. Uh, just explain. Then I'll take some of the horizontal forces is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. Then I'll get say R1 plus R2 prime is equal to P1 is the first equation, but I cannot get a solution. Therefore, I'll take some of the uh, movements about this joint 2 is equal to zero. That gives R1 multiplied by 1.25. R1 multiplied by 1.25 is equal to P1 multiplied by uh, 1.25 by 3 that gives R1 is equal to P1 by 3 therefore P1 is just now calculated as 9.58 student that divided by 3 it gives 3.193 kilo Newton 3.193 kilo Newton is R1 once I get this now I'll substitute in the previous equation sigma h is equal to 0 from that I'll get R2 prime is equal to R2 prime is equal to P1 minus R1 which is equal to 2 P1 do it by 3 or it works out around 6.387 kilo newton 6.387 kilo newton right then i want to get uh, the reactions r2 double prime as well as r3 also by taking the bottom plate the bottom plate for which now i'll do the reactions in the bottom plate now i'll take uh, some of the movements about this joint 3 some of the movements about this joint 3 is equal to 0 that gives uh, R2 double prime multiplied by 1.25 meter is equal to P2 multiplied by Y bar. Substituting the numeric values, now I'll get say this R2 double prime. R2 double prime. 
means the the reaction at the top of this uh, uh, first tire plate first tire plate is equal to 12.784 kN 12.784 but we already know what is uh, the sigma h is equal to 0 for this free body diagram it is r2 double prime plus r3 is equal to p2 therefore r3 is equal to p2 minus r2 double prime that is equal to 28.74 minus 12.784 which gives 17 oh sorry 15.956 kilo newton 56 kilo newton right therefore now i would have the reactions at the middle joint 2 therefore the total reaction at the middle joint 2 is now given by r2 prime plus r2 double prime which is 6.387 plus 12.784 which works out 19.171 19.171 is the reaction orthogonal reaction at joint joint 2 joint 2 therefore how the reactions at all the joint student then i can do the analysis and all the states st are intended 45 degrees 45 degrees to the horizontal or to the vertical therefore for resolving the uh, uh, force components at joint 1 at joint 1 now i'll come to this uh, 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 diagram where i do have the reactions r1 r2 r3 all three are known uh, this is of the uh, bottom stay having a force of f2 at the top stay having uh, a force of f1 which are inclined at 45 degrees therefore taking some of the horizontal forces now i would have r1 is equal to f1 cos 45 and similarly uh, by having uh, the horizontal force uh, sigma h is equal to 0 i would have r2, r2 is equal to f1 cos 45 from that now i can say that what is f1 f1 is r1 divided by cos 45 or it works out say root 2 r1 are substituting R1 now will get 4.516 kilo Newton which is the tension the tension force plus indicates the tension force okay. is the uh, force in the top stay the tension force in the top stay right is 4.516 kilo Newton similarly the force in the bottom stay I can prove that as root F2 is equal to root 2 R2 are substituting with now we get 27.11 kilo newton that is how the tension in the bottom stay as uh, 27.11 kilo newton kilo newton then once i get these uh, force student then i'll move to the design now i just completed the analysis now i'll move to the design as for is804 and as well as is805 the other day we have seen that because these stays are submerged in water submerged in water then the permissible stresses the permissible stresses can be reduced by 20 percentage hence the allowable stress in axial tension for these stays is reduced by 20 percentage is equal to 0.8 multiplied by 0.6 multiplied by fi 0.6 multiplied by fi is the no, uh, normal basic value normal basic value reduced by 20 percent is that gives 120 mpa newton per mm square hence uh, the net area of the top stay required a n1 net required is given by f1 divided by sigma at substituting which now we'll get 4.96 10 for 3 divided by 120 say around 37.63 mm square and uh, the net area of the bottom stays required f2 divided by sigma at it works out uh, say around 225.92 mm square because 27.11 uh, 1043 divided by 120 is around 225.92 mm square this is how i get the areas of the top as well as the bottom stairs then i'll uh, go to the steel tables or structural engineers handbook one where now the area required for the uh, top stays is very small value just mere th uh, roughly 38 mm square compared to the top 226 mm square for the bottom stays therefore now i'll try to uh, choose a section is is uh, um, 30 isf indian standard flat with uh, 6 mm thick 30 is the width of this flat 30 is the width of this flat and uh, the thickness is 6 mm 6 mm like this right therefore uh, for top stays as well as for the bottom stays i'll uh, try to fix 60 isf 6 
for the bottom stage this is my assumption let us check whether it can resist this much of tension or not and uh, both of these uh, flats are connected by means of 160 mm dia rivets this is my assumption therefore if i do that then the net area of the top stage provided is a pro a1 a1 pro is equal to 30 minus the diameter of the hole for 16 mm 16 plus 1.5 17.5 30 minus 17.5 multiplied by thickness 6 that gives 75 mm square which is greater than the required 37.63 mm square therefore okay similarly the area, net area of the bottom strip uh, provided a2 a2 pro is equal to 16 minus 17.5 multiplied by thickness 6 mm around it is provided as 255 mm square against the required value of around 220 6 mm square therefore both the sections what you have assumed are okay they are furnishing the net areas required net areas required because the forces are very small student then i uh, i can um, i can provide i can provide 160 mm dia rivet 160 mm dia rivet or otherwise you can check whether this is sufficient or not by calculating the rivet value rivet value and that i will do in the next subheading how to calculate the rivet value of 16 mm dia in single shear or in bearing then i'll discuss that in the next subheading now once we conclude this design of the stays just now we have provided uh, uh, 30 isf 6 for this top stay and 30 isf uh, sorry 60 isf for the bottom stays like this right which are connected by means of one one rivet one rivet right you please see that because of this obviously if the forces are resolved right at the side plate the top stay will give rise to a downward force v2 and as well as as well as the bottom stay will give rise to uh, sorry the top stay will give rise to a downward force of v1 and the bottom stay will give rise to a downward force of v2 along the side plates as well as at the connection they will give rise to right v1 here and v2 here that is how they will give rise to two sets of forces one downward one upward right v v1 v1 right similarly v2 v2 right even sometimes they may be connected in transverse direction also therefore here i do have v2 v2 here also v2 v2 therefore there here at this joint there are two v2s acting in the upward direction in the upward direction that now we will see in the uh, further analysis further analysis right now let us move to uh, the next abiding as the design of top tire are longitudinal girders are bearers are beams then first we will do the analysis of these girders then we'll move to the designs then uh, just now explain that uh, the forces uh, at the end of these plates will be acting in the downward direction and also at the interior location they will be acting in the upward direction and so let us calculate these uh, different forces these different forces right this now just to explain the vertical component of the force in the stay act upward at the bottom of the plates and they will be acting in the downward direction at the sides as just now explained uh, using the schematic right then what are the loads that are acting now i'll calculate the weight of the water including free board is 9.81 multiplied by 2.8 uh, 2.5 that gives 24.525 kN per meter square per unit area and that of the weight of the bottom plates bottom plates here the bottom plates of thickness 6 mm that was 0.006 multiplied by the unit weight of the steel plates as per is 875 part 1 density say around 78.5 kN per meter cube that would gives 0.471 kN per meter square per unit area therefore the total um, intensity of the load acting is 24.996 kN per meter square then this is how the uh, vertical component of the force in the top stay v1 v1 is equal to f1 cos 
4.516 divided by root 2 or say it is 3.193. This itself is equivalent to the reaction R1. This is itself is this V1 itself is equivalent to the reaction R1. Similarly, this V2 itself is equivalent to that reaction R2. Similarly, the vertical component of the force in the bottom stay V2 is equal to F2 cos 45, but F2 is equal to 27.11 micro cos 45 is 19.171 acting in the downward direction at the end and also in the upward direction at the uh, interior locations now let us see the analysis of uh, intermediate beam students right l4 l4 the garden numbers you have given right for the uh, uh, starting l1 l1 uh, and then exterior as also l7 l7 right next l2 l2 l3 l3 l4 l4 is the central one right and fifth, sixth are the other one, uh, last one is L7, L7. That is how seven number of girders are uh, taken. Now I'll take uh, the intermediate, intermediate girder like this L7, L, uh, sorry, L4, L4. This girder, these longitudinal girders, I'll take L4, L4 on which you please see that uh, for this, uh, there is only the bottom stay connected. Therefore, here I do have at uh, this joint the force, the force. V2 acting at the end in the downward direction, whereas at the inter intermediate location that V2 acting in the upward direction, right? Upward direction, right? Similarly, here at the other end, right? At the outer side, that V2 is acting in the downward direction, and this V2 is acting in the upper direction, upper direction, right? As shown in this figure. Now let us examine this uh, loading diagram, students. Yeah? Then the panel width, the panel width for this beam, this beam is 1.25 meter by 2, 1.25 meter by 2. And therefore, there is a, the load onto this girder, this girder is 1.25 meter width, 1.25 meter width, panel width. Now, let us calculate what, what, what are the loads. Then first UDL due to weight of the water and bottom plates. Right. Just now we have calculated this uh, intensity of the load 24.996. I'll just recall that. Uh, then, over a panel width of 1.25 meter student, that now works out say 31.245 kN per meter per meter length of the UDL in the form of UDL per 1 meter length per 1 meter length, like this. So that with the bending moment shear force, we can calculate. Right. Then, we'll also assume the self weight of this uh, girder this girder as say 0.755 kN per meter then the total UDL intensity of the uniformly distributed load is around 32 kN per meter right? that is shown here right 32 kN per meter starting from left end to the right end uniformly acting through and through through and through then next other forces are like this because um, the the girder, the longitudinal girder, L4, L4 is also having the side plate like this, right? Side plate, therefore, what is this weight of this side plate? What is this weight of this side plate, right? You, you can see like this, right? Therefore, it is also having the side plate, side plate. Therefore, what is the weight of this side plate? Side plate. Now, I'll calculate the weight of that side plate, WS, notated by WS, is given by, I do have the bottom plates of 6 mm thick and uh, uh, the top tier as 5 mm thick plates five, right each of 1.25 meter by 1.25 panel width panel width and panel length therefore 1.25 1.25 and its thickness is equal to bottom plates 6 mm as well as 5 mm therefore now i'll get the volume of these plates plates that multiplied by the density 78.5 it now works out 1.349 kN acting in the downward direction as WS, WS. You can see that this is how at the ends, at the ends WS and WS acting on either ends. 1.348, 9, 1.349 at the ends, right? We see that the loads are mirror image, mirror image, right? Then next. The load from the bottom stay V2, V2, this just now I explained in the schematic also, right? V2 acting in the downward direction, this V2, 19.171 acting in the downward direction at the end, right? And also at the other end, whereas after 1.25 meter, that will be acting in the upward direction like this, right? 
V2 9 acting in the upper direction 19.171 right this is the different forces uh, that are acting on the intermediate beam L4 L4 student right this is the loading diagram loading diagram or load intensity diagram and for which now I'll try to analyze and get the shear forces and bending moments and reactions and the bending moments right now you please see that uh, I do have the columns uh, sorry uh, this uh, this is the uh, cross beam. This is a cross beam at A and B, right? The joint A and B are the supports in the form of cross beams, right? And this remaining 1.25 meter is just cantilever, cantilever, right? Only main span of this beam is 5 meter, 5 meter. Please make a note of this, right? Then, once uh, I draw the load intensity diagram, then then I will do analysis. Then I want to get then I want to get the reaction forces Ra and Rb. What are these? Therefore, those Ra and Rb are nothing but half the downward load acting in the downward direction, right? Therefore, all the loads that are acting in the downward direction are like this, right? 19.171 plus 1.349. There are two such sets multiplied by 2, right? Minus 19.171 multiplied by 2. There are two such sets acting in the upward direction. Minus, therefore, minus and plus 32 kilometer multiplied by this 7.5 meter acting in the downward direction. Plus that whole divided by 2. That whole divided by 2. That is how that Ra or Rb both are 121.349 kilonewton. Kilonewton acting in the upward direction like this acting in the upward direction reactions reactions right then let us say the other uh, points are this is how the uh, central span c rotated by c and uh, this left uh, free end as d that right free end as e respectively these are the other points at which i want to get what are the uh, shear force and bending moment ordinates then i'll now calculate what is the bending moment uh, value at the joint A at the joint A which is the negative bending moment at the support or hugging bending moment at the support that now is given by because of symmetry MA is equal to MB which is equal to uh, negative bending moment is hugging bending moment 32 minus 32 multiplied by 1.25 uh, multiplied by 1.25 by 2 minus also in addition to this even i do have the movement due to these two forces given by minus 1.349 plus 19.171 acting at a distance of acting at a distance of 1.25 meter acting at a distance of 1.25 meter like this right therefore that gives say uh, around 56.65 kilonewton meter hogging Hogging bending moment, right? Like this. Hogging bending moment. Hogging bending moment, right? That. 56, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, 50.65, 50.65 kilonewton meter. Uh, sorry, uh, 56.65 kilonewton meter. Then, I'll calculate uh, uh, what is that uh, bending moment at the mid span C. Therefore, by doing the same, I'll get uh, the bending moment at the mid span, mid span as minus. I'll take a section at a distance of 3.75 meter because 1.25 plus 2.5 which is 3.5 7, 3.75 meter starting from the left support at which the bending moment is given by this minus 30 all uh, all anti-clockwise all anti-clockwise couples are hugging bending moments minus bending moments and all clockwise couples are sagging bending moments right with that notation I'm just calculating this means minus 32 multiplied by 3.75 whole square by 2 minus 1.349 plus 19.171 acting at a distance of 3.75 meter distance and and i do have the hugging bend uh, hugging bending moments are now over now sagging bending moments right which is ra plus 19.17 ra is equal to 121.349 plus 19.17 acting at a distance of uh, 2.5 meter that gives a value say 49.35 kilonewton sagging sagging right like this right sagging bending moment right 
actually that moment uh, that moment distribution is like this actually right is like this right like this right? therefore 49.35 that is how the UDL shear force is one degree higher constant right then bending moment is uh, sorry uh, uh, shear force is linearly increasing right linearly varying bending moment is quadratically varying quadratic curve therefore there is how it is varying quadratically it is varying quadratically right now once I do the analysis of the uh, intermediate beam L4 L4 now I'll move to the analysis of uh, other intermediate beams L3 L3 and L5 L5 because of mirror image both are same on which uh, that is how uh, right L3 L3 are right where at the end I do have V2 acting in the downward direction also at the same point you can see that the top stay is also there therefore V1 is acting in the downward direction and at this giant V2 is acting in the upward direction at the third giant V1 is acting in the upward direction hence I uh, will show all this right remaining is just mirror image now I will show all the loads uh, acting like this say uh, just now explain that V1 V2 acting in the downward direction and also self fit of the plate as you have discussed in the previous heading right V2 acting at the next giant in the upward direction because of the bottom stake and V1 acting in the upward direction V1 acting in the upward direction but however if I go to that um, plan you can please see that uh, not only there is a, a longitudinal stay from the longitudinal direction is there but also there is a, a uh, there is a uh, top stay also connected from the transverse direction therefore that will also give rise to another another V1 another V1 therefore this giant will have two V1s acting in the upward direction one from the longitudinal direction one from the transverse direction transverse direction and also here the other giant also same do right one from the transverse direction one, one from the longitudinal direction the same is now shown here right uh, both this is one from the longitudinal direction one from the transverse direction whose numeric values are 3.193 respectively that of the um, bottom stay is 19.171 and weight of the uh, side plates 1.349 kilo newton kilo newton and the intensity of the udl is already calculated for 1.25 meter panel width that won't change that won't change right there is also 32 point kilo newton uh, kilo newton per meter then this loading once you draw up to the mid span Remaining is just mirror image students, right? Remaining is just copy and paste as a mirror image, right? And each of these length is 1.25, 1.25. There are such six um, uh, plates. And let uh, these uh, points are, uh, joints are given by A, B, and C, D, E, F, G respectively. At different locations, I want to find out uh, what are the uh, shear force ordinates as well as what are the uh, bending moment ordinates so that I will get the maximum shear force and maximum bending moment. Now, because this loading is symmetric, now I can say that uh, the reaction is half of the total downward load acting in the downward direction, which is half multiplied by 32 multiplied by 7.5 plus 2 multiplied by 1.349 plus 3.193 plus 19.171 minus minus acting in the upward direction 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 19.171 there are uh, two such uh, forces are there and also there are uh, 2 plus 2 there are 4 forces which are acting in the upward direction of 3.193 therefore doing which now I will get uh, all such uh, now I will get the reaction that whole divided by 2. Now I will get the reaction as 118.156 kilo newton. Ra is equal to Rb. Right? That itself is the shear force at that uh, section of that beam or girder. Then I will get uh, the negative bending moment Ma is equal to Mb. Right? At the uh, at the or the cantilever bending moment at joint A and B at A and B which is minus 32 multiplied 1.25 whole square minus 
1.349 plus 3.193 plus 19.171 multiplied to 1.25 that gives minus 54.64 kilo newton meter kilo newton meter as the hogging bending moment whereas i'll take a section 3.75 meter at a distance of 3.75 meter at which that central location because of the symmetry i'll get the maximum bending moment at the central span rotated by c mc is equal to minus 32 multiplied by 3.75 whole square minus 1.349 plus 3.193 plus 19.171 multiplied by 3.75 plus 118.156 plus 19.171 multiplied by 2.5 plus 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 193 multiplied by 1.25 that now works out 37.37 6 kilo newton kilonewton that is how the positive value indicates that this is a sagging bending moment a sagging bending moment okay and that is how that bending moment uh, distribution diagram student for this loading diagram for uh, this loading diagram of this girder l3 l3 r because of mirror image l5 l5 and once understood that uh, in a similar fashion now we will do the analysis of intermediate beams l2 l2 l6 l6 right I will go to those beams at which right I do have one V2 downward, right? One V2 upward, but also one V2 upward from the transverse direction, and also one V2 upward in the transverse direction, right? From transverse direction V2 upward, from transverse direction V2 upward, right? From transverse direction V2 upward, right? This is all the different forces that are acting on that L2 L2, L2 L2 or L6 L6, right? That is all, and also. At the ends, at the ends, there are the weights of the side plates acting in the downward direction, notated by Ws, which is equal to 1.349. That is how the different uh, loads that are acting up to the uh, 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 half of the span are like this. Just remaining is mirror image. However, the UDL remains the same, 32 kilonewton per meter, because the panel width has not changed. 1.25 meter only. And so for this loading diagram for this loading diagram uh, now i'll find out what is reaction ra and rb how of the downward load we already discussed how to get that reaction right half of this downward load will now work out for this case as 73.42 kilo newton each ra is equal to rb and uh, the bending moments the negative bending moment or cantilever bending moment at joint a at joint a will now work out 50.65 kilo newton meter and also at the because of the symmetry i'll get the max uh, or the uh, maybe positive bending moment i may get positive or negative bending moment until i calculate that value i cannot say right i'll calculate what is that central bending moment mc mc that upon substitution of these numeric values i can find that result as plus 1.424 kN meter plus indicates that is still sagging Sagging bending moment only, right? That is of the variation of the bending moment diagram. Variation of the bending moment diagram, right? Then, once I do for all the intermediate beams, now I'll move to the end beams. End beams, right? There, for the end beams, now uh, how these states are connected, right? Here, we do have uh, for this entire L1, L1, I do have the weight of the um, weight of the side plates acting through and through, like this, through and through acting through and through right on that girder as udl and also uh, and also the second load is that uh, the uh, re the reactions in the downward direction v2 from the bottom stay here and v2 and v1 from bottom and top stays and v2 from the bottom stay v1 v2 from uh, top, uh, bottom and top stays and v2 from the bottom stay from bottom stay right and also at the end of this half of half of this panel 1.25 by 2 that much of side weight side weight will be acting in the downward direction in the downward direction like like this right half of this will be acting also on this right ws by 2 right all these loads are now shown on that l1 l1 or l7 l7 students right on which the loading is like this right half ws by 2 which is 0.675 kilonewton kilonewton 0.675 kilonewton 
I just now explain how you get this V1, V2, right? So on and so forth up to the central location, right? Now, th this is of the two types of loads, but the third load, the third load is the UDL. Now, UDL will change because the panel width is not 1.25, but it is 1.25 by 2, half of that only, half of that only, because that end, I do have 1.25 plate student, right? Half of this load is only 1.25 by 1.25 by 2 only, by 2 only, okay? Then, let me calculate that UDL on that 1.25 by 2. We already uh, know that intensity of this uh, uh, water as well as bottom plates is 24.996 that multiplied by 1.25 by 2. Say, this is 15.623 kiloton per meter, but we already assume the sulfate of the uh, girder as 0.755 kiloton meter. Therefore, now I get the total intensity of the UDL as 16.37378 kilonewton meter. This intensity 16.378. 16 right? Now, for which now what I'll do is also the weight of this side plate is also from 2.5 meter is acting continually. Hence, I'll calculate the first air plates, the first air plates of 6 mm and the top air plates of 5 mm thick, each of 1.25 meter, 1.25 meter uh, height and its uh, density 78.5 that now gives 1.079 kN meter. Now I will add that all acting also as UDL at the end, uh, uh, for the end girder Therefore, the summation of these two is around 17.457 or around 17.46 kN per meter acting as if UDL from left end to the right end, from left end to the right end. And also, the weight of the side plates acting at the end, just now I already explained, that is equal to WS by 2, which is 0.675 kN. This is of the load loading diagram or load intensity diagram along with the uh, salient points A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, right? Well, C is the central point and A and B are the supports, right? And D and E are the free ends, right? Free ends, right? And G and F are the interior points, right? At which I want to get the shear force and minimum ordinates. Then you can find, as you have discussed in the previous subheading, what is the reaction? Reaction Ra is equal to Rb, is a total downward load, right? That divided by 2, that now works out around 117.27 students and the negative bending moment or hogging bending moment, Ma is equal to Mb is equal to minus 14.484 km meter and the central bending moment, the sagging bending moment, now it works out plus 91.996 kN meter. 91.996 kilonewton meter, right? That is of the central 91.996 kilonewton meter and uh, hugging, uh, uh, hugging bending moment of say 14.484 kilonewton meter. Therefore, first I'll move once the analysis is completed. Now I'll move to the designs of these girders. I hope students are understanding the discussions, right? Uh, the analysis part is now over. Now I'll switch on to the design of end girder. For which just now we have seen the analysis results as the shear force is equal to 117.27 kN and as well as the maximum bending moment either 91.996 or 14.484. It is 91.996 or around say 92 kN meter. We are there in design of end girder. End girder. Therefore, these are the uh, the forces of the end girder. I have just recalled. Now, however, the beams are laterally supported students like this. You please see, right? Um, the These longitudinal girders are connected by means of the stays through the stays which are connected to the longitudinal girders. Therefore, the compression flange, the compression flange of these girders is connected by means of rivets in the Flange part, therefore, they cannot buckle, they cannot buckle, they cannot bend in the lateral direction. Hence, these are uh, la laterally supported, laterally supported uh, beams with a span of certain span of 5 meter only effective span because these are it is now simply supported. Now, I also say from IS 8, 800, 
the effective span instead of is um, the uh, clear span because the effective length factor k is equal to 1 5 meters right then let us initiate the design as per is 800 then uh, i required section modulus z required is equal to m divided by sigma bc However, the permissible bending compressive stress is equal to 0.66 Fy, where Fy is the instance of the steel sections of the girders or the beams or the, the, the rolled steel sections, which is 250 MPa, right? Hence, the permissible bending or compressive stress is equal to 0.66 Fy, 250 means 165, 165 uh, MPa, MPa uh, Newton per mm square. Therefore, now I require the section model as xx is equal to 557.6 centimeter cube or I will increase for the trial section this value by 50% age. Therefore, 1.5 multiplied by this required value. Say around 836.4 centimeter cube or 10.3 mm cube. Right? Now, I will open the structural engineer's handbook one or shield tables. Now, I will try with ISLB 450 at the rate of 65.3 kg per meter or around 0.653 kN per meter. The different uh, structural properties from the structural handbook 1 are like this side. I have to have the depth of the section, the depth of the section H 450 mm, the Thickness of the flange rotated by TF or capital T is equal to 13.4 and thickness of the web rotated by small t or TW is equal to 8.6 mm and the section modulus provided ZXX is equal to 12, 23, 12, 23 mm cube which is much greater than the required 836.4 mm cube therefore it should be okay the section is primarily is okay from uh, the uh, section modulus point of view or the moment of resistance point of view then the minimum radius of variation R by is equal to 32 mm and H2 H2 is 33 33 mm mm right then if I note down these properties then I will calculate these ratios the ratio of this uh, capital T to small t which is 13.4 divided by 8.6 is around uh, 1.56 which is less than uh, 2 less than 2 and also d1 by t d1 means uh, h minus 2 h2 divided by t it is now working out uh, say around 44.65 which is less than 85 less than 85 these two parameters are now calculated now calculate the third parameter d by t ratio d, d means h by tf this works out around 33.58 and also the strenuous ratio l by r by l by r by l is 5000 divided by r by is 32 then this was also 156.25. Uh, Therefore, I obtained four parameters, four ratios for Fy is equal to 250 MPA. MPA from this table 6.1, page number 58, 58 of IS 800. 800. Now, we'll go to that uh, table, right? This is all that IS 800, 1984, which is applicable for Fy 250 for T by T less than 2 and D1 by T less than. 85 table 6.1 b maximum permissible bending uh, stresses sigma bc in mp in uh, newton per mm square mm square now i will note down the, these basic uh, values here the values for different d by t ratios starting from 8 to 100 these are available for different sentence ratios the values from 40 to 40 to Last one is 300. The values are available. In between, I need to interpolate. Therefore, now I'll do the interpolation. Therefore, for D by T, 30 and 35 and L by, L by R by, I do have uh, 150 and 160. I just noted down from the table. These values are sigma BC is 92, 88, 87, 83 respectively. But I do have D by T, D by T as 33.5. Yet. Therefore, now I will do interpolation for 30 and 35. I do have the values as 92 and 88. Therefore, for 33.58, upon interpolation, I will get 89.13. 89.13. Similarly, for L by RY 160, for uh, D by T 30, I do have a value of 87, and for D by T 35, a value of sigma BC is equal to 83. Therefore, for 
phi eight d by t. What is that? Permissible bending compression stress sigma b c. Upon interpolation, I'll get eighty four point one three. This is of for uh, d by t thirty three point five eight. I do have these two results after interpolation as for l by r y one fifty. 89.13 l by r y 160 84.13 but i do have a slenderness ratio of 156.25 therefore now i'll do the uh, interpolation using these two or extrapolation right then upon uh, interpolation i'll get this permissible bending compressive stress as 86.02 mpa mpa therefore the moment of resistance of this section is now say m, m is equal to fz Permissible bending compressive stress multiplied by section modulus product student, right? And for that is 86.02 multiplied by 1223.8 10 power 3 divided by 10 to power 6. It works out say around 105.27 kilonewton meter, which is much greater than the bending moment coming onto the section, just mere 92, 92 kilonewton only, around 92. Therefore, the section is okay from the moment of resistance point of view. The uh, resistance is the resistance of the section is more than that action or action is bending moment now it is okay from bending bending point of view from this bending point of view once it is bend, okay from bending point of view now also check is it okay from the shear point of view at the support we know that maximum shear force is equal to v 117 117 therefore now i'll make a check check for the shear check for the shear that is how the actual shear stress tau VA cal is equal to the total shear force V divided by the shearing area. Shearing area is that H multiplied by thickness of that web. H multiplied by thickness of that web. Thickness of that web, right? That is of the shearing area of that web because the shear force is purely taken by the web part only. This web part only. There is a prime assumption of the designs of the beams and the bending moments, if any, are taken care by the flanges, the flanges, right? Then do, uh, substituting the numeric values, I do have 117.27 multiplied by 10 to power 3 divided by this uh, 450 multiplied by 8.6. It works out, say, 30.3 MPA, MPA, which is much less than the permissible uh, average shear stress tau VA is equal to 0.4 multiplied by FY around 100 MPA. Therefore, it is okay. It is okay. Right? Now, once I uh, conclude the design of the end beams, then I will also provide, uh, if I see the design forces, the design forces of the intermediate beams, I do have the forces like this in, in beams L3, L3, the maximum, the maximum shear force is 118.15 kN and maximum bending moment is 54.64 kN meter. But however, just now we have fixed this ISLB 450 at the rate of 65.4, which can resist up to 105 kN meter and as well as which can resist more shear also, more than 117 kN. Therefore, now I'll, I'll choose, I'll fix the same section. ISLB 450 at the rate of 65.3 kg per meter for all intermediate beams also. This is uh, how I will conclude the design of intermediate beam. However, please make a note that student, I cannot uh, provide, I cannot provide the, the beams of different size, the different size. Why? Means you please see that, right? Once I have fixed, once I have fixed the uh, for one intermediate beam, I have fixed the ISLB 450 as one depth. Now I cannot reduce the depth of this beam. I cannot put here just 250 or 275. If I want to do that, then I need to put a filler plate here. But generally that is not advisable. Therefore, in order to um, avoid that, what we will do practically is that we will put the same depth, the same depth girders, right? If it is ISLB 450, we'll put the same depth girder here so that the filler material, filler material, if any, is not provided, is not needed, right? So that all the bottom levels of the bottom planes of this longitudinal girders are at the same level, which is matching with the top plane of the main girder, main girder, right? 
that is how practically will provide the same uh, girder both for uh, intermediate girders as well as for uh, end girders right well, i hope student you understood the discussions the discussions on these um, uh, the design of the design of the tank the tank as well as the tough the main main components right the tough the tank plates as well as the tough the inside uh, stays stays as well as the longitudinal girders and cross girders in the next class we shall see the design of the staging the staging this part the staging part right okay student if you now um, will uh, conclude the discussions in the next class we shall see the designs of the staging if you like these discussions on the advanced shield design on our youtube you please do click like share and subscribe to our youtube channel right we'll meet with another discussion in the next class till then bye bye students